Hey guys, welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to model and animate a planetary gear train in Fusion 360. It's not overly complicated, but there are a few quirks that you need to keep in mind when you're modeling the train. Without further ado, let's get started. So let's start by defining the design parameters for our planetary gear train. A planetary gear train is made up of three types of gears, which I've shown on the screen here. The ring gear, which has its teeth on the inside, is sometimes called an internal gear. The sun gear is at the center, and a number of planetary gears that mesh between the sun gear and the ring gear are shown here as well. For this example, we're going to use spur gears for the sun and the planets, but you can also use bevel gears or other types of gears if you need to. The primary advantage of planetary gear systems is that they can develop high gear ratios in a small amount of space. For this example, we're going to design a gear ratio of 1 to 6. That means for every rotation of the output shaft, our input shaft will rotate 6 times. Also for this example, we're going to assume that the ring gear is fixed and that the sun gear is our dri driving gear. The output is therefore going to be a carrier that's attached to the planets. I'm not going to go into great detail on the gear design in this tutorial, but I'll put a link down in the description below for another video that I did recently that explains some of the inputs we'll be using here. First, we'll define the module to be 2 and the pressure angle to be 20, both pretty standard. Next, let's choose a number of teeth for the ring gear, which will also determine its size. Let's use 80 teeth for the ring gear, which gives us a pitch circle diameter of 160. This equation can now be used to calculate the number of teeth on the sun gear. If we fill in 80 teeth and solve for S, we determine that our sun gear has 16 teeth. Knowing that, we can now calculate the number of teeth on the planets using this equation. Filling in the number of teeth for the ring and the sun gears, we calculate that each planet will have 32 teeth. Finally, we need to define the number of planets. I'd like to use three planets for this example, but we'll need to check that they mesh correctly. This equation can be used to ensure proper meshing. By filling in the number of teeth for each of our gears, we can determine the result, and for it to mesh correctly, the number must be a whole number. In this case, it is 19. Now let's jump into Fusion 360 and start modeling. For this example, I'm going to use the built-in spur gear add-in so that we can draw the gears more easily. To turn on the add-in, we'll go up to Tools, Add-ins, Scripts, and then we'll click on the Add-ins tab and go down to Spur Gear and click Run. This adds a Spur Gear command to the Create panel in the Model Workspace. So now if we go back to Solid, we can go to Create, and there's our Spur Gear down at the bottom. And then we'll just fill in some of the design parameters that we just calculated. So pressure angle is going to be 20. We want a module of 2. We're going to do our ring gear first. So we'll do 80 teeth. We'll leave backlash at 0. A 1 millimeter root fillet radius. Thickness we'll say is 10 millimeters. And the hole for this one will just be 0. So that creates a regular spear gear for us with 80 teeth. But we actually want the inverse. So what we're going to do is create another cylinder and use this to cut out the shape. Now what we can do is use the extrude command to cut out the shape of the gear from the cylinder. So let's activate our cylinder, and then we'll press E for extrude. We'll choose the face of the gear. We'll choose a cut, and go minus 10. Then we click OK, and now our ring gear has been cut out. Now what we can do is actually remove the spur gear and we can rename this one to ring gear. Now with the ring gear in place, let's go ahead and model the planets. Now we go up to create and define another spur gear. Now almost all the parameters are going to stay the same except for the number of teeth. Our planets have 32 teeth, so we'll set that here and I'm going to add a little bit of backlash. Also our hole diameter I'm going to set to 5 millimeters. Now if we switch to a top view, we can copy this planet and define the other two. So now I'm going to press M to move. We're going to choose Components. And I want to zoom in here to make sure we set the origin of the move to be the center. Next, because we want to create two copies, I'm going to click Create Copy. And we're going to move up 48 millimeters. Now the reason I moved up 48 millimeters is because of the pitch circles of the sun and the planet gears. If we add both of the pitch circle diameters together and divide by two, that gives us 48. 
Next, I'm going to repeat the move two more times. But this time I'm going to add a rotation. So you click rotate, create a copy. The axis is going to be the center here. And because we want equal spaced gears, they're going to be 120 degrees apart. And then the last one. This time we're going to rotate 240 degrees, but we're not going to create a copy because this is the last one. So there's our planet gears in place. So the last gear that we need to model is our sun gear. Go create spur gear and our sun gear has 16 teeth. So we'll put in 16 and then click OK. So just for aesthetic reasons, I do want to add an input shaft to our sun gear. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to set the sun gear as our active component. I'm going to draw a sketch right on the face of this gear. We do want to capture position. And all I'm going to do is press P to project. And we're going to project the input shaft diameter onto the current sketch. Click Finish. And then I'm just going to press E for Extrude. We'll pick that diameter. This is going to be a join to join it to the shaft. And I'm just going to go negative 40 millimeters. Now we've got an input shaft connected to our sun gear. So next I just want to stay organized here a little bit. So I'm going to actually rename our gears. I'll change this one to be a planet. And I'll change this one to be the sun. And the next thing we want to do is if we go back to a top view, we'll see that our gears aren't meshing correctly in all cases. Looks like the top planet is okay, but both of the bottom planets and the sun gear are a little bit out of sync. So what we're going to do is press M, rotate, pick the component, and then the axis. And we just want to rotate, rotate each of them visually so that they mesh correctly. Sometimes you might have to go up to the text box here and type in a fraction of a degree. So that one looks okay. Let's scroll down and do the planets. And once we have everything meshed correctly, let's go ahead and capture the position. The last component we need to model is the carrier. The carrier is essentially a bracket that's going to connect each of the planet gears to our output shaft. So let's go ahead and create a new component. I'm going to call it carrier. And we're going to create a new sketch right on the face of the planet gears themselves. And you've actually got quite a bit of artistic license to draw this how you want. I'm actually going to speed up the video here and draw the carrier so that you don't have to watch all the way through. So there's our carrier model connected to each of the planet gears with an output shaft included as well. So now that modeling is complete, let's go ahead and define the joints. Because we modeled each of the components in place, we can use as-built joints. First, let's define the joints between the carrier and each of the planets. We'll go assemble as-built joint. We want these to be revolute joints. And we're going to choose the planet and the carrier. Position will be the shaft. And we'll repeat that for each of the other two planets. At the very beginning, we defined the ring gear as being fixed. So let's right click on the ring gear and choose ground to hold it in place. 
Next, we need to define a joint between the carrier and the ring gear and the sun and the ring gear. Let's go ahead and start by defining the carrier. We'll again go ahead and choose assemble as built joint. We'll choose the carrier and the ring gear and the point of rotation will be around the center point. We'll do the same thing for the sun gear. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and name each of the joints just to keep things straight. So now let's zoom in and try to rotate some of our components. As you can see, it's not working right because we haven't defined the motion links between each of the gear components. So let's define the motion links now. First, we'll reset the position. And let's start out with the easy one. Let's define the motion link between the sun gear and the carrier. So we can just select our joints over here on the side. We'll choose the sun and the carrier. And if you remember from the beginning, we've got a gear ratio of six to one. So that means for every one rotation of the output shaft, our input shaft rotates six times. Next, let's define the motion links between the sun gear and each of the planets. Again, we'll go to assemble motion link and this time we'll go Sun and then the planet. And because our planet gears are twice the size or twice the number of teeth as the Sun gear, we should use 180 and reverse for each one of the planet gears. So repeat that for the other two gears. Now if you rotate the Sun gear, we can see everything's moving in the right direction but the meshing isn't working quite correctly looks like it's slightly out of sync. And the reason for that is that it's not a true two to one relationship between the sun and the planets. The carrier is rotating as well, so we need to add that to the rotation of the sun gear. Let's reset the position and take another look at the motion links between the sun and the planets. To fix it, we need to add an additional rotation to the sun gear. The amount we need to add is 360 degrees divided by the ratio between the ring gear and the sun gear. So that's 80 teeth divided by 16 teeth. Now, if we do that for each of the other two planets, before we fix this, I'm gonna name the motion links so that we can keep them straight. This first one, if you remember, was the relationship between the sun gear and the carrier. These next three were the relationships between the sun gear and the planets. Let's take a closer look at the relationship between the sun and the planets. We need to update the calculation for the rotation of the sun. We need to add 360 degrees divided by the ratio between the ring gear and the sun gear. So that's 80 teeth divided by 16 teeth. If I just make a copy of that and apply it to this, the other two planets, then everything should work correctly. Now if you rotate the sun gear, everything meshes correctly. Now I'm just gonna apply some materials and we can see the whole thing working in action. So I just created a motion study so that we can see the planetary gear in operation. And there we go guys, that's how to model a planetary gear train in Fusion 360. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the like button, and hope to see you again next time.